Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Kingmaker. Last time we finished up Sorrow Flow having recruited um Kaliki and Kanara, Kanira, whatever. Um but they are currently not in our parties. We I think we have to go back to the capital to get them. But we're also currently fatigued, which isn't great. But we are going to try to make it at least to this crossing here, the crossing of the the Crooked River. Let's go ahead and go down there and we'll try and camp there. Oh, we're no longer fatigued. Never mind. No camping required. I need to catch my breath. Octavia is always the first one to get tired. It's a long path. I wish we could just cross over here. More strength. Faith. We'll try to get over here to the uh to Nettles Crossing. I'm assuming this is where it would meet at if the bridge is still up before we rest. How long did we spend in there? Okay, get rid of these. Um, the curse. We still have 20 days into the curse. So that's not great. Where do we need to... Where do we go to meet the nymph? Verdant Chambers. That's way out here at the, the mouth of the... The Marquis River. Or the Murky? The Murky River. Okay. Or not the mouth. Is that the mouth or the head? I think it's the head, right? The mouth is when it's emptying out into the the ocean or the lake or wherever. Okay, now we're getting exhausted. We're not too far away from the capital, though. I think we can make it. Surely nothing's going to attack us this close to our capital, right? Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was like, there's no way, right? We made it. Made it home. Oh, wow. Okay, so we can get to the tavern here. All right, that's good to know. We can um, work on our, our class builds. And do we want to go there right away? No, I think we want to go to the main square right now. We need to sell and we need to sleep before we do anything like that. Or anything further. Got the music bumping, though. Okay. So, now there's still no tavern. Or they got Ennio, the traveling merchant, has arrived. Octavia and Ragonger. Right, right. I guess we do have to go outside... Through that world map to get to the tavern. Alright, well first let's go ahead and sell to Hassif here. See what you have and offer. Another 942 gold. And sort by type. Um, any weapons that we don't need. We don't need this light hammer. We don't need this short spear. Another 1200 gold. Probably need to put this back on. Yep. Okay. And now we can just click this to rest, right? Man, I'm really digging that music. Oh. You need to play that everywhere. Saving. All right, we are well rested now. Now we did see that there was ooh, a chest. Yeah, we've got something going on in the freelands. Oh, it's just the shared stash, okay. Let's see what's happening. Any missions complete while we were out? It's been probably about a week, huh? Since we last left. Merchants in the capital. New merchants have arrived in the capital. 
Traders have already set up their stalls and are waiting for new customers. Economy up by two. Bandits outrage. Several bandit encampments have emerged in the Nala marches. They plunder the peasants, rob travelers and merchants, and even attack tax gatherers. These bandits need to be muzzled. The squad sent by the general defeated the bandit gang, returned a portion of their plunder, and discovered a secret cache of stolen jewels. 100 BP and plus three to military. Good job, Amiri. Good job. And advisors. Can we, have we found anybody? Aha, Kanira can be our um, treasurer. The treasurer's duty is to keep the coffers of the bar barony full and ensure any gold spent is spent wisely. And she will seek to fill the barony's coffers. I will trust you for this. We've appointed one person for all of that, so we've got that done too. Fantastic. We go to the map here. How do we build new settlements? Nothing built in Tuskdale. Can I go into Tuskdale and start building things? Uh, stats, okay. Constructed, nothing. Build. All right, so we've got the barracks here, the brewery, a dance hall, granary, herbalist house, longhouse, lumber yard, monument, orphanage, some piers. That's probably pretty important. Warehouses and workshops for docking ships and handling cargo and passengers can only be built can only be built in a water slot and affects the lumber yard. Okay, a shop, a shrine, a smithy, tavern, watchtower, windmill, and wooden walls. Ooh, that could be important too. Let's go ahead and get the pier. And the wooden walls. That's important. Begin construction of a new building at outskirts to the barony. Yeah, yeah. And I think the next one will probably be... Let's see. Plus one, plus one, plus three for the dance hall. One, one, plus three for the longhouse. So those two seem to be the highest priority, maybe. So the longhouse, spacious building for holding meetings and discussions. It affects a whole bunch of stuff. Kind of... I think the effect goes with, um, like, what's adjacent to it. But we'll go ahead and we will build that. Does this affect dance hall? I don't see that it does. This doesn't affect anything. An establishment for dancing and drinking. Where members of different social classes can inter intermingle discreetly. Sometimes wearing masks or other disguises restricted to baronies with a chaotic alignment. So I've never seen that one before. That's cool. We want to build that. Be right here. Okay. FX jail. Re a building to house city guards, militia, and military forces. Plus one to stability when adjacent to a longhouse. Okay, so we want that to be adjacent to our longhouse. Put the barracks right here. So, monument. A monument can be a statue of a city founder, a bell tower, a large tomb, or a public art display. And an orphanage. A shelter where orphans and homeless can find a warm bed and a bowl of soup. Restricted to baronies with good alignment. All right, so I think these plus ones are going to have, yeah. Plus one loyalty when located in a settlement with a windmill and when located in a settlement with a tavern. We have a tavern, right? Oh, do I not? Uh, plus one relationship when adjacent to a longhouse and when adjacent to a barracks. Now, adjacent means I have to be right next to it. Does diagonal count? Um, does stability go up? Oh, I don't know yet. Will we rather the relations or stability or espionage? Well, we're going to want the tavern near the front of the place. So, right there. Okay, shop. 
plus one economy when adjacent to a tavern. So you're going to go right here. Mm. Okay. So the monument we'll put here and the shrine here. Really building a lot here. Mm. Plus one economy when adjacent to a shop. We'll put the shop there. So that's not going to work here. Put the watchtower there. But I think windmill goes there too, right? Okay, instead of the granary or brewery. Which we don't have either one of those. Get the brewery. Put the brewery right here. Definitely want a brewery. Um, so we need something that gets benefit from shrine or barracks. <clears throat> Plus one arcane when located next to a shrine. Put the lumber yard up there. Um, when we're looking at some of the piers. Okay. Kind of want an orphanage though. Put the orphanage there. And a watchtower here. All right, we've got 11 BP. <laughs> Good. Got to build this settlement though. That does mean I don't think we'll be able to put anything. Because this costs BP usually to send things out, right? We don't currently have any events. Now the projects, yeah, 1500 BP. Avanki's orders is only seven days. Okay, or pillage the temple. Why can't we build the temple? Insufficient funds. Oh, pillaging the temple when it costs anything, or it costs 10. I mean, we could do this. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind a rastal. This is going to take seven days to do, right? Oh. What was the one that, like, actually took days to, to... Like, when I started it, it took days. So I'm going to go to the outskirts up here. How do I find found a, a settlement? Can I not do that yet? I guess not. I don't remember how to find settlements or start settlements. Okay. Let's go here. Can I get to the tavern? Oh, yeah, there's also... Ah, damn it. I gotta get rid of this dexterity damage. We have one potion of lesser restoration left, right? Where is it? There. Drink it. Ah, it's still not good enough. Holy crap, I have minus five damage there. Okay, so we need a, uh, a cleric. So, to the main square. I'm we'll gonna have to get this fixed. Because I need my decks. Need it back. And then we'll go to the tavern. And uh, do some, some character builds. And then I don't know what we're gonna do after that. We'll still have some... A couple weeks before we... Have to... Um, I'll go ahead. Asinoe is over here, isn't she? Before we have to go to the hilltop, I guess we'll make our way to the Verdant Chambers. Take a look at your wares. Oh, you're Ennio the Traveling Merchant. Keen Elven Curved Blade, Long Sword, Masterwork, Elven Car, Shock Bow, Boots of Elven Kind. 
I don't have anything I want. Do you have anything to talk about? Uh, you have many goods from Kionin. Have you been there? Ennio shrugs. I was born in Kionin, in Greengold, a port on the shore of Lake Encarthen. And the only place in the elven homeland where others are allowed entrance. Merchants from all over the world rush to Greengold as soon as Queen Talandia, uh, Talandia Adesero, 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 opened it to strangers. It has been a city of commerce ever since. You might say that the business of, of trade runs in my blood. In returning to your question, yes, I often visit my homeland when I'm nearby. Tell me about yourself. I prefer to travel to the wild and sparsely populated corners of the continent. The farther I wander from big cities and trade routes, the less competition I have from the rich merchant guilds. In my travels, I sometimes manage to acquire true curiosities. Of course, sometimes I get into trouble instead. Few can boast of escaping a giant scorpion by climbing a mammoth cactus. Farewell. Farewell. There we go. Arsinoe, I need help. Help me. Please. Uh, scroll of Lester Restoration. We will buy a handful of them. 900 gold worth, so five of them. Use. And use. There we go. And we have a couple to use at a later time. The path is clear. Okay. Let's go do some character building. Finally. Uh, now we are going to get rid of Tristian for you. Yeah, I don't know. We might have to, depending on how many more chaotic good characters we get. I was unaware that there were so many of them. We might have to rethink my um, idea that if they're chaotic good, they'll be in the party all the time. Because... I don't remember what Jubilast is. He might just be neutral. And I don't know what... Um, uh, I forget the name of the ranger. I don't remember what he is. Enter. The tavern. He's probably... The ranger might be neutral too. I don't know, maybe Ju maybe Jubilast is chaotic good. If he is, that only leaves me one spot. Alright, so a whole bunch of people in here. Anybody important besides the person I'm looking for? We got Elena or Elena. Amir is here. Behind the end bars inn's bar stands a young woman with curly red hair, a round face and rosy cheeks. She gives you a friendly smile, fixing her cap. It's so nice of you to stop by, Your Grace. I'm Elena, the innkeeper. Tell me about yourself, Elena. I'd be happy to, Your Grace. I love to talk, especially about myself. Where are you from? What land? Which family? I hail from the River Kingdoms. Artume, to be precise. Or Artum. I'm from a farming family, like just about everybody from around here. There's more fertile land and pasture there than anywhere else in the River Kingdoms, except for maybe Seven Arches. The folks who grow crops and tend cattle are well respected there, but at the same time they live in constant danger. There's too many bad people, too lazy to work all day, but don't make taking others but don't mind taking other people's things. Why'd you decide to become an innkeeper? I was bored. Please don't get me wrong, I was fine at father's farm. And I've got nothing but respect for farmer's work. But in our back country, you could go half a year without seeing one new face. No news, nothing happened. Nothing happening. I've dreamed of working at an inn since I was a child. That's the kind of place where there's always lots of guests and stories. Where does the inn's name come from? Oh, don't ask. It's too funny. I kept thinking about what name to pick. Choosing just the right one. But not one to waste time. I drew a beer mug on the door. I figured folks would just see it and come on in. So the locals got used to calling the place the beer mug in. <laughs> so the name stuck. Tell me about the River Kingdoms. A month wouldn't be long enough to tell it all, your grace. Each kingdom is a special place all its own. Elves live in one of them. 
Another one, half of the country belongs to the murderer's guild. And the other half gives them the or their orders. They say that even... They say that even... What? <laughs> they say they even get locals discounts. There's just one thing that unites us all. Like a strong thread keeps a quilt together. It's the six river freedoms. Ah, the freelands. <laughs> the six river freedoms? Yes. The first freedom... Say what you will, I live free. It doesn't mean you won't get beaten up for what you say, though. The second freedom, well, if you can call it a freedom, oath breakers die. Those who break oaths get killed just like that. So people prefer not making any oaths at all. The third freedom, walk any road, float any river. Once the ruler of Hybar decided to build a gate across the river and collect a fee from each passing boat, well, there's no more Hybar. The fourth freedom is even worse than the second one. Courts are for kings. Whatever a king says goes. Well, as long as he doesn't say to build a gate across a river. Now for the fifth. Slavery is an abomination. Nothing to explain there. Runaway slaves from all over come to us for a reason. In the sixth, you have what you hold. It means that theft is a much worse crime than robbery. If you catch my drift, you can honestly you can honestly beat a robber and keep what's yours. But a thief acts on the quiet. Shame on him. That's just disrespectful. Thank you, Elena. We will discuss it another time. Show us what treats you have. Bag of holding? Nope. Uh, do we want to... I don't want to get camping supplies. <laughs> uh, didn't, that didn't last long, did it? Do we want to get... No, we do not want camping supplies. I suppose we should sell these books, huh? How much do the books weigh? They're not cheap, or they're not light. Yeah, so we should start selling the books. My guy's not much of a reader. I apologize if you're looking for a, um, a reading episode. Not in this playthrough. Yeah, I mean, that's, what, each book's two pounds? That's a significant amount and a good amount of money, too. Okay, I think we can safely get rid of the flaming ninjaku. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. Okay, any other new people? Guess we need to loot this stuff and then sell it back to her. Take all that stuff too. Hey, Amiri. Okay, nothing new from you. Let's uh, take a step upstairs before we talk to the retrainer. Let's just loot everything. Jathal. Locked. Oh, I can actually talk to her now. We will do that as well before we leave. Though I'm not super eager to do so. She's got a cool story. It's just I don't think her <laughs> her and Agronach will get along at all. Writing on the wall. Aldori crossed out. Sertova crossed out. Beer underlined. Hell yeah. I could go for another beer. I don't know. It's a little late for a beer though. A little late. Recording pretty... Pretty late. That's it, that couldn't. I've had a. I've already had a drink. Um. Okay. Elena, one more time, please. Another 52 gold. I shall take. Oh. You didn't take my books. Silly you. It's an honest mistake, really. Give me that fish. Okay. Anoriel, eight eyes. Okay. Uh, certainly, as promised, the first three times you request retraining, the Pathfinder Society tutors will do their work for free. Shall we summon them? Let's get started. Okay. So, who do we need to work on the most? Amiri and Harem are the two that stand out as ones I need to work on. 
because they're going to be in the party a lot. Okay, so we'll do a Miri first. So, let me um see if I can't find that guide real quick. I have it here. I just got to pull it up. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, this is the Beast Lord, I think. Um... Okay. So, let's see. This takes two levels of barbarian, seven light, or seven levels of fighter, six levels of sacred hunter, and five levels of ranger? We want to do that. We might just make our own. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so we're back. I've um, I looked at the build that I first found on her being a sacred hunts master, or just a sacred hunt. Yeah, sacred hunt master. And that one had you dipping in the ranger as well. And my initial thought on that was. When did that mess with your animal companion levels? And after looking into it, it seems like some other people had that concern too. Um, so I found a build that does almost all Sacred Hunter and then also takes points in the two-handed fighter. Uh, where's the fighter? And the two-handed fighter to get some two-handed weapon skills. But I don't know. I don't know. I think I want to go more barbarian, just like a split between barbarian and inquisitor. So let's take a look at what the sacred hunts master brings to the to the table here, and see exactly what level I want to get to in each. So, okay, so we've got a deity selection, we've got a domain selection, inquisitor proficiencies, uh, orisons, which are cantrips, right? And detect magic, stern gaze, sensing deception, and inquisitor receives a moral bonus on all persuasion skill checks, made for intimidation and perception checks equal to half their level, and they get an animal companion, which is the big thing, right? Okay. So cunning initiative adds her wisdom modifier to initiative checks in addition to her dexterity. Sure, that's nice. I think Amiri has some wisdom. Uh, Hunter's tactics. Against her teamwork feat to her animal companion. So most of our feats are going to want to be focused on teamwork feats a lot. And we do get teamwork feats every, well, every four levels after third. No, every three levels after third. Okay. And then animal focus. And it can take an aspect of an animal as a swift action. She must select one type of animal to emulate, gaining a bonus of special ability. Yeah, I think this gives you like a, like a stat boost, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, you get Bane. Inquisitor can imbue one of her weapons with the Bane weapon special ability. It's a swift action. And then you don't get a whole lot until a level 11. You get Stalwart. If his resistance to avoid certain attacks, if she makes a border to the will saving throw against an attack. Okay. And then Greater Bane. Exploit weakness at level 14. The Inquisitor learns to take advantage of an opportunity that presents itself. Whenever the Inquisitor scores a critical hit, she ignores any damage reduction. In addition, the target has regeneration. The character creature loses regeneration on the round following the critical hit. It can die normally. Creatures who whose regeneration always functions are immune to this ability. Okay. And then level 17, second animal focus. And... Second animal focus, animal companion. Okay. So, I think we could probably do without the level 18 teamwork feat. So that leaves us, we could go three levels in the barbarian and vulnerable rager. That would give us one rage power, one damage reduction, up to extreme endurance. At third level, the Invulnerable Rager gains one point of fire resistance. Yeah, I don't really think that's super important. 
if we're being honest. Was she always an invulnerable ranger? I thought she was just a regular barbarian. Hmm. The one thing I want from barbarian is the bite attack. So... When did we get that, um... Animal... Thing that's at level 4. Okay. So we'd have to go all the way. Okay. How much do we want? I mean, we'll have an animal companion. So, I mean, like, we'll be fine. We're going to go. We're going to start just take our henseman. I want to get to this. We'll see how useful the animal focus ability is. Um, and then if it's super useful, we might think about going all the way to level 17. If not, we could stop at, like, level 14 and take six levels of this, which would get us... I mean, just more rage powers, really. I wish I could see, like, what the rage powers will be. I can't, can I? Hmm. I guess the greater rage tower, this rage, and the mighty rage, and all that stuff is probably pretty good. Did, um, did wild, um, whatchamacallit? Wild Call of the Wild, did that change her class? I'm pretty sure this wasn't her class beforehand. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Could have sworn she was just a regular barbarian. Anyway, we're going to take our hunter. Huntsmaster. For now. And we're going to go with Gorum. Because why not? Gorum, also known as the Lord in Iron. Got a battle. Hell yeah. Domain selection. We're going to go Strength Domain. In Strength and Brawn, there's Truth. Strength Surge. As a standard action, you can touch a creature to give it great strength. One round, the target gains an enhancement bonus equal to half your level in the class that gave you access to this domain. To melee attacks and athletic checks, you can use this ability a number of times plus three plus your wisdom modifier. At eighth level, you add half your level in the class that gives you access to this domain. Enhancement bonus to your athletics checks. Okay. That'll be fine. And then our animal companion. So... The one build suggested you get a Smilodon. I'm not a big fan of Smilodons. Not because they're not good. They have four claw attacks. Holy crap. But be just because they don't look as cool as, say, a leopard, which has the trip. We, I think we want trip. As far as I'm aware of, trip is the best thing you can get on an animal companion. So, the Smilodon has five attacks, though. <laughs> that is pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Whereas, everything else has about... Yeah, I'm not getting a giant centipede. Fuck that. That's two attacks. One attack plus bite. Yeah, that's... That's actually really amazing. <laughs> five attacks. Whew. And then the wolf, 1d6 plus trip. So the leopard is probably the next best because it has three attacks plus the trip. I'm going to get leopard. Because I love me the leopard. And I think trip is just such a good spell. Or ability. Alright. Now your stats here. Um, I do like nature. So we'll get that one. And... Apparently, you have Persuasion. I don't know why. But we'll get Mobility as well. And then we do have Spells as her. Now, her Spells aren't going to be great. Um, we're going to want Spells that buff her. So, things like True Strike, maybe Shield of Faith, Sanctuary Magical Weapon. I don't think that's needed. Um... Divine Favor could be good. Plus one bonus on attack rolls and rep weapon damage. That could be good. Bless could be good. We already have somebody. Well, actually, we currently don't have anybody with Bless. So, yeah, you can be our Blesser. Why not? And we'll get True Strike as well.
There we go. And then we're going to keep going in this. So level three. Or level, yeah. Level three, level two hunt, hunts master. We get the cunning initiative. And then some skill points. And then another, ooh, ability. Um... Okay, do we want boon? What is what are these? Power attack and weapon proficiency. We probably want the boon, right? Doesn't that like make the the companion a lot stronger? This ability of your animal companions are calculated as though your class were four levels higher to a maximum effective level. Okay, yeah, we're gonna want that. Boon companion. And then here, we'll probably get Divine Favor. Good. Level 3 Inquisitor. I'm gonna take our Strength Point here. Yeah, we'll go with those. Actually, go back. Go back. Get mobility up to 4. Because that would have driven me crazy otherwise. So this is our Teamwork Feat. So our Teamwork Feat. You and your partners are so close that you can almost read each other's minds. You can be target of the spell with any person of any of your companions who have... Ooh, that's kind of cool. Coordinated defense, distracting charge. When your ally with this feat uses the charge action and hits, you gain two bonus on your next attack roll against the target of that charge. That's kind of cool. I imagine we'll try to be charging a lot with her animal companion. Shield Lord, Shield the castle, Caster, Swarm Scatter, Tandem Trip. Huh. Whenever you attempt a trip combat maneuver against an enemy threatened by an ally with this feat, you roll twice. Tandem Trip. Hell yeah. That should synergize pretty well. Um, I guess we'll get Shield of Faith. Yeah. Alright, and then one more level. And this. Boom, boom, and a boom. And we're going to want weapon focus. Great sword. Gives her plus one to attack on that. We get level two spells here. Okay. So we want things that buff her. Ooh, granting that weapon the flaming property. An extra 1d6 points of fire damage is a successful hit. I don't think our Inquisitor class has the judgment stuff. That could be cool. Anything else? Invisibility. Let's see, invisibility, spiritual weapon. What does this do in this context? Mm, I don't think that's really her. Weapon of Awe. An awe-inspiring instrument. The weapon gains two circuit bonus on damage rolls. And when the weapon scores a critical hit, the target of that critical hit becomes shaken for one round. The mind affecting effect. Okay, so we're gonna get that and we're gonna get that. Increase her weapon skills, yeah. Hell yeah. And we get all these animal focuses, which is really what I wanted to see. You gain plus two enhancement bonus to strength. Increases to four at eighth level and six at fifteenth level. Okay, so we're probably gonna want to get all the way to level sixteen as an inquisitor. So it'll be four levels of of um, whatchamacallit. Okay. So I don't know if she hits as much anymore. Or if she's going to hit as much anymore. 16 to 30 damage though. Damn. But we've got a leopard. Which we'll have to level up. No, it's at level 17. But this would be a level 16. I see. I am, I'm, I've, I've got you. It'd be a level 16 um, Inquisitor. So that's probably, that is definitely, I think, where we want to get to. Weird that doesn't show this here. Yeah. And, uh, 
But then we'll have four levels of this. So we'd have two rage powers, which will get us the bite attack and stuff. So I think that'll be good. Cool. I think this is going to work out pretty well. Personally. All right. So our animal companion. Who we did not get to name, it seems like. Yeah, just go perception with you. A very wise leopard. And now you're going to get stuff. Actually, you know what? Oh, damn it. Oh, that's fine. I don't want to go with perception. I think we want to go stealth with you. Yeah. And then an ability here. We want to get that bite attack. To be uh, hitting often. Because that's the one with the trip. Next. Oh, right. One of these two. Um... Keep going, Dex. You get tough skin. Not bonus to natural armor. Lovely. Is that what that was? Yeah. Okay. Physical prowess. Oh. Neat. Okay, so Dex is up to 24 now. Very good. And then another ability here. Uh, you know, your dexterity modifier instead of your strength modifier, that weapon's damage. I can add that to bite. Means your bite attack should be pretty good. Plus 12 to hit. You're adding your dexterity, yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh, that's weird. It's adding it to this one, too, but this isn't the bite attack. Oh, well, I'll take it. So, plus 12 the hits probably... Is that, like, one of our better ones? Plus 6, I'm probably going to be the highest. Yeah, it's the same as mine. Not bad. Okay, cool. So that's her done. Time is it? Okay. The other person we want to respect is Harem. And Harem starts as a What? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> um. There's nothing here. Flurry of blows? What the hell is this stuff? Stick your fists, leave behind armor and shields and said, Why is he? I feel like this is the call of the wind stuff. That's really maybe messed things up. <laughs> Okay, well, that's not happening. We're gonna go Blight Druid. What's a Nature Fang? That's kind of cool. Well, now that we're here, is there anything else we'd rather him be? I think he's got... Most, most of his attributes are like physical stuff, right? You can make him a Barbarian. Yeah, she was not an invulnerable rager, ranger, ranger. So this is all definitely new stuff. Interesting. Okay. That. Hmm. That does change things. A scald could be cool for him. Um, I wish I could see his stats right now. I can just do this. Okay, so wisdom definitely. He wouldn't make a bad monk. Have I already talked about that? He can't be a monk, though. 
That's probably why they gave him the War Priest Sacred Fist thing, huh? Now that I'm looking at it. That's definitely why they do that, I bet. Well, what does he get from this? It doesn't, like, tell me anything. Detect magic, deity selection, spontaneous casting, blessing, sacred fist proficiency. Improved unarmed strike. You're considered to be armed when, even when attacking unarmed. You can make unarmed attacks that deal... 1d2 or 1d3. You know, I wonder if this combines well with... I don't know, man. I don't know how much this changes, like, what we're going to plan with him. I don't think druid attacks and shapeshift ta count as unarmed. Aren't those natural? Are those the same thing? I don't know. We're just going to keep doing blight druid, though. Fuck it. I have no idea what your domain is. Hold on, back out of this. Okay, so he's still a cleric in here. Okay. Let's just get one level in Druid here. And what's the best domains? So, I know he would probably be like a destruction domain kind of guy. Uh, either you can commit 34 aura of destruction for a number and a crash of attacks made against the target in this aura. Equal to your blah, 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 blah. Ooh, all critical hits are automatically confirmed. That sounds really good. Hmm. All attacks made against targets in the area, including you. So does it mean enemies? This helps enemies too? Is that what I'm... I don't know about that then. Oh, this destruction domain is different. Are they different? I don't think they actually are. The death domain here. Nah. I mean, he's a dwarf, so Earth's domain could make sense. Hmm. I think plant domain is usually pretty good. He can't do animal domain, right? Isn't plant domain usually kind of good? What is this lightning subdomain there? You can enlarge and get bramble armor. Lightning domain. Fire. Storms subdomain. Undead subdomain. Water domain. Weather. Hmm. I kind of like Earth domain form. I know it might not be the best, but he's a dwarf. Earth domain, sure. I know he's... Yeah, but I'm sure he's probably got one of these domains for um, his other thing. I'm going to go for it. He's, uh, he's one that we might need to work on again afterwards. Like, we might need to respect him a second time. Because I wasn't prepared for that sacred fist thing. Um, yeah. And, you know, having this druid stuff might help with the Miri. Being able to buff her animal companion more. Maybe he can get an animal companion. I don't think so. I don't think blight druids can get that. Okay. Complete. And then we're going to get out of here. And then let's take a look at your stuff here. Oh God, it doesn't tell me anything. I 
Earth Domain. Um, approved unarmed strike, unarmed strike. Yeah, I'm almost certain. That, um, hmm, 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 hmm. I'm almost certain that, um, unarmed attacks are not the same as like claw and bite and stuff. Okay, well. The fact that I can't really tell what it picked up for this stuff does make it a little difficult to use. Um, like, I guess you don't pick a domain in this. Never mind. No, we can see everything. Okay. This is, this is essentially a monk that's a priest. Like... <laughs> Huh. That is kind of cool. I do kind of like it. These blessings too. Hmm. I don't know. Fervor. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, guys. I don't know what to do now. I'm almost... <laughs> I'm almost thinking we should just leave him like this and then stop the episode. <laughs> we still got a little bit of time, though. Let's, let's try and figure something out. Because he can't just be a straight monk, right? No. And I don't think there's anything in here I'd want it to be. So if the war priest is giving him unarmed strikes and attacks is there any other class that benefits from that I suppose we could just be an unarmed druid huh there's nothing that says we need a weapon as a druid we already have those feats so we might as well not be the question is, like, are, are we going to be effective with unarmed strikes as a druid? Like, we're not going to have flurry of blows if I don't go down this path. Um, we're not going to have blessed fortitude. Does that just increase fortitude? Hmm. Channel energy. Yeah, this is basically a class made for him, it seems like. Bonus style feat. We're just going to keep going, Druid. I'm going to act like that doesn't exist unless you guys tell me I should do something otherwise. Okay. Or if it just isn't working. I suppose that's a, a fair trade off, too. Okay, so if we're going to go down the druid path, we'll get to wild shape. Do we want to just be in wild shape all the time? I remember that not always being the best option, but you're higher in strength than you are dexterity. So power attack could be good. Mm. We could get deflect arrows. We must have one free hand. Does that <laughs> does that count when I'm in animal form? That's kind of cool. Deft hands. Yeah. Dodge.
Hmm. You know, with him, we might need to get that mod where I can, like, start from scratch with their characters. We can get Stunning Fist. Toughness. Okay. Gonna get Power Attack. One in strength. I get all those spells. And then another one, this is gonna get our wild shape. Abilities here. We could get cleave. Furious focus. No. Lenorn style. Unarmed strikes, though. You can cast spells while using Wild Shape. That's a good one to have, yeah. Oop. Was there more? No, no, no. We got that. Okay. Next. Wait. Oh, yeah. We don't need to pick our spells, do we? Okay. So, you, my friend. So, plus seven, seven, twelve. Oh, shit, I can't use anything. Oh, no. Okay, well, with the flail, you do a lot more damage. You don't hit as much. Armor-wise, we got this high level two armor. Pretty sure that's for Amiri, though. I forgot all of your stuff has come off, huh? Okay, make sure you have all this stuff on you. Hold off on that. I'm gonna hold off on that too, actually. <laughs> Wait a minute, we've got a lot of stuff. Hey, you, we want the strength one for you. Okay. For you, my friend, you are gonna want that. And that. I had you with the con one. Mighty Fist Natural Armor. Give you that too. That as well. Okay. Can I see your sister in here? Yeah. Do you guys share armor or stuff? So f that. You don't. Okay. Good to know. You're going to be our main person. And give you that. You, my furry friend, get that. And that. You can wear chainmail. It's not good for you, but you can. You can. Interesting. Okay. Alright, and I think that's good for now. I know we were talking about doing something with uh, Valerie here. Now I'm curious, though. Is she going to have... Is she going to be straight vindictive bastard if I go in here and I respec her? Oh my god, she would be. Huh.
that gets rid of the tower shield crap. Oh god, that changes so much. Shield focus. Combat expertise. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's something to think about. <laughs> now I'm curious about what everybody's going to be. Is everybody going to be different? No, you're still a Magus. And I'll just sigh on Blood Rager. Okay. Um, are you different, Tristian? No way they made no way they changed him, right? No. Lindsay wouldn't be different either, surely. Yeah, no. Still a bard. And then Octavia is not gonna be different either, I'm sure. Wizard. You can go all the way back to level one before she was a rogue. So you could just go straight wizard with her. Oh man, that changes so much. <laughs> it really does though. Okay. Use magic device and improved initiative. She's an exploiter wizard. Hmm. The possibilities are endless now. Contrary to traditional wizardry, wizardly study, an exploiter wizard foregoes the tried and true methods of arcane focus and arcane schools for the exploits favored by an arcanist. Some wizards regard the, this blatant exploitation of arcane magic as somehow cheating. But most exploiters believe this prejudice is close-minded and overly traditional. Okay, that does sound like her, but I, I don't know. I kind of, I do kind of like the arcane trickster quite a lot. You know, for being honest. So we're probably going to keep her like that. Although that means I can't ever really respect her. Otherwise, she lose. I guess we could just put a level of rogue into her, huh? It really wouldn't be that big of a deal, I don't think, but... Interesting. Okay. So, before I was interrupted by myself, um, you look pretty strong. 43 HP. You don't look as strong. I mean, your damage is still insane, but I think your attack went down. Now, you are at a minus four because of all your negatives. But um, this, I can't remember. Does she ever get to a point where she can wield this thing effectively? I don't remember. And then there's you. I'm not sure what if what I want to do with you. If I want to just keep you Sacred Fist. Because that does sound kind of cool too. But we already have, you know, a Fister. <laughs> kind of. And, K and uh, Kaliki and uh, Kanira. I don't know, guys. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Um, and we'll figure something out in the next episode until then hope you all have a wonderful day i'll catch you later